So I've gotten a lot of requests to make this video after my previous showcase of my top 5 combat modules in Foundry. Combat Utility Belt makes running combat much easier on everyone involved by automating concentration checks and automatically applying conditions to tokens when certain spells are cast. It also has a suite of other extra features that can be useful for many different campaigns. This module is a must-have for combat-heavy games, and here's how to make the most of it. Once you've downloaded the module and activated it in your game, you'll want to start by going into the module settings and activating the features you're wanting to use. Concentrator is essential for 5th edition D&D, and I'll go over setting that up later in the video. We'll need Enhanced Conditions activated for Concentrator, but by itself Enhanced Conditions gives you the tools to create and track conditions with ease. I'll be going over this later in the video too. As for Award XP, it's pretty self-explanatory. It splits the XP values of defeated enemies in a scene between the players. Hide Actor Names hides the enemies' names in chat and turn order, pretty useful. Pan and Select enhances the camera and Reroll Initiative does what it says it does every round. Not useful for 5e, but it can be useful for other systems. Temporary Combatants is a great way to track environmental effects. We'll go over that first. And Mighty Summoner provides a better way to track summons, but it's so niche and only tested in 5e, so I won't go over that in this video. On a final note, Trigler is its own thing, which basically lets you program your game to automate combat. It's pretty intensive and would require a whole separate video to go over. Let me know in the comments if you want a guide on it. Let's start by quickly going over temporary combatants before we get into Concentrator and Enhanced Conditions. When combat is started, you'll see the ability to add temporary combatants in the turn order. Clicking this, you can name it, set its initiative, and give it an icon. This is incredible for environmental effects and layer actions, and it looks even better when used in conjunction with the Combat Carousel module, which I went over in my previous video. Now let's move on to Concentrator. You can go into the computer and change around its settings. They should match up to your current system already, but it's here if you need to change any of it to work with yours. I activate all three check marks here to get full use out of this feature. Once you're done there, just go to the player's sheet and cast a concentration spell. The condition will be automatically applied, and if the player takes damage, they'll be prompted to make a concentration check, and it follows the rules for half of damage or 10 as the DC to beat. If the player fails the check, concentration is not automatically removed though. This is an often requested feature, but it's just not in yet. You might have noticed that the condition didn't show up in chat when it was applied. We can do that by going into Enhanced Conditions. First, go into the computer again and check everything in Enhanced Conditions, which will display when a condition is applied and what conditions are currently active on a token's turn. You'll want to then go into the Condition Lab. Here, you can see the default conditions and make some changes to them. Right now, we want concentration to display in chat, so we also have to mark it here as something that gets displayed. By default, it is. The overlay checkbox makes the condition overlay the entire token, and the other two options are basically there just for when a token is marked dead by a condition, though remove others might be useful if some spell effect cleanses all others. So we have concentration set up. But what if someone is affected by the Bless spell? How can we mark them to track that effect? In Condition Lab, change over to System Custom, where we can add whole new conditions. Scroll to the bottom and add a row. Give it a name, in our case Bless, and give it an icon. What icon you choose is important, because it'll be there at a glance for you and the players to know what's happening on the battlefield. I just use the built-in icons by navigating to User Data, Systems, D&D 5e, Icons, Spells, but there's also pretty good icons in the skills folder too. Now we want to mark the reference so that when clicked in the chat, the spell's effects can be easily referenced back to. Since Bless is an SRD spell, we can find it in Items, C for Compendium, Spells SRD, and Bless. Now just click Save Mapping. If you click on a token and look in its conditions, you'll now find the condition you made in the listing. If applied, you can click its reference in chat to read about it. But we're not done yet, because we want to make Biko's job easier as a Peace Domain Cleric by automatically applying Bless to all of his targets. If we open his character sheet and drag Bless out onto the macro bar, we can edit the macro, write this line, and then save the macro, and select the token that is casting the spell. While selected, target the tokens they're casting the spell on, and then click the macro. You'll see that everyone targeted gets the condition, and its output, to chat. You can share this macro with your players by creating a new compendium, marking it as a macro, and dragging the macro in, from which the players can drag it out onto their bars. But Biko's a Peace Domain Cleric, and his extra blessed ability called Emboldening Bond isn't part of the SRD. 
we can still do the same thing to make it easier for him to get the effect to his allies, but we'll still have to do a tiny bit of extra work to get it right because it's not in the SRD. Go back into the condition lab and create the effect as normal, and give it a unique icon. However, since we manually created the ability for a sheet, it's not in any compendium that we can reference. We can fix that by creating a new compendium, I called it Player Features, and then dragging the feature from a sheet into the new compendium. Then we can find that new compendium in the drop-down lists and apply it as a reference. Now just do the same thing as Bless by dragging the ability from his character sheet and editing the macro. Though this time make sure the word in quotations matches the condition you created in the condition lab. It should work just the same as Bless. Now Biko can quickly cast his go-to abilities with ease. If you found this guide useful, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Shout out to Nexus and Smoothie Buns, my first two shout tier patrons. If you too would like to support my work, visit my Patreon where I post maps I make for my campaign and sneak peeks for new content. I'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.